This video is brought to you today in collaboration with Nacon, who have just recently released the new updated Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr Ultimate Edition for consoles. This released originally back in 2017, but it's now back with this updated version and is available on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series. You can of course check it out by clicking the link just below in the video description. As an Inquisitor, you enter into the Caligari Sector, a vast, ancient and forgotten region on the fringe of Segmentum Tempestus. The Sector has suffered greatly from continual warp surges, smaller, more localised iterations of the greatly feared warp storms that cut off entire systems from the rest of the Imperium. However, out here, these smaller warp surges are all that's required to turn a world to darkness when planets are so far from the guiding light of the Astronomicon. Consequently, the Caligari Sector has become a haven for the heretic and Xenos alike, not to mention the corruptions of chaos. Your role, unsurprisingly, to purge this foul taint by any means necessary. The game has had something of a rocky road, but after four years of updates and 25 DLC at this point, if you're a fan of 40k it's got something to offer, and especially if you're a fan of action RPGs. 40k enemies, it's got them from Chaos Marines to Cultists, Horrifying Demons, Eldar from both sides of the coin, Tyranid and even Traitor Guard pitted against you through a procedurally generated mission system. You can check out Inquisitor Marta in the link below this video. Of course, if you were an Inquisitor of the Imperium facing down those most dark, foul and offensive enemies of humanity, there's going to be one thing you surely need. A bolter. Today we return with a revised episode looking at one of the most synonymous of 40k weapons for the Imperium of Mankind, the Bolt Gun, Bolter, Bolt Weapons. Some of my past videos were, let's say, contaminated by heretic or scrap code during processing, and so it's been necessary for me to steadily remake one or two of these videos from the past. I have some others to work on, but I'm also taking the opportunity today to refresh this video with some updates and additional rambled musings. Bolt weapons are one of the most recognisable armaments within the 40k verse, as these are the core weapon of choice for the Astartes, the Space Marines. It's also widely used, mounted on different forms of Imperial heavy hardware, tanks, aircraft, support weaponry, and this includes its use by the Imperial Guard, the Astra Militarum. Like many weapons of the Imperium, it can also be scaled, and while the Mechanicus do not like to see unauthorised adaptation of STC hardware, they're comfortable enough with something being scaled appropriately for wider use. This is where you will see bolt weapons adapted for use by the Imperial Ecclesiarchy and their military wing, the Adeptus Sororitas. You'll also see it deployed sometimes among the members of the Imperial Guard, especially officers, and of course members of the Inquisition have access to variations of bolt weapons, usually finely crafted exceptional examples that may or may not have had unauthorised adaptations. While bolt weapons are in some sense a relatively standard issue weapon of the Imperium's finest, and that now over the millennia have been refined to enable many specific patterns, that is to say adaptations, and not least during the era Indomitus that has seen a veritable explosion of new weaponry at the hands of and behest of Belisarius Call and Gilliman, so as to best now equip the new Primaris Marines of the Imperium. But bolt weapons remain for both the Astartes, Sororitas and the sub-factions of the Imperium far more than just a weapon. They are a highly revered symbol of the Emperor of Mankind's wrath. They are a holy tool to unleash revenge and judgement upon the enemies of mankind. Bolters, for many Astartes and especially for any who are part of the Ecclesiarchy, are divine weapons which signify mankind's total supremacy over the myriad of enemies they must continually crush and eradicate. Consequently, due to their status as literal extensions of the Emperor's will, were any ordinary civilian human to be found in possession of even a single Astartes bolt round, let alone the weapon itself, they should of course be prepared to expect a severe punishment. Such is the nature of the militarised religion of the Imperium in M41. 
bolt weapons come in a large amount of variations and patterns and can also be scaled as we said down to a pistol or scaled up as a heavy weapon. It may also be combined with other weapons to create a dual platform of say a bolter and a flamer or a bolter and a melter. There are other iterations such as the storm bolter seen by space marines wearing sacred terminator armor or pintle mounted upon vehicles. Variants are even found on titans or super heavy tanks like the devastating Vulcan mega bolter commonly seen in use by warhound titans or of course the horrifying Macarius Vulcan. As I discussed on an entirely separate video which I'll link below and at the end of this video, there's of course one problem when it comes to these massive iterations of bolt weapons, which is the available ammunition. The speed to which they fire means that in theory they should be out of ammunition almost instantly. How exactly is that problem overcome during battles which may last for days or weeks across the vast battlefields of the Imperium? So moving on, Standard bolt guns fire a self-propelling explosive bolt, which ignites as it leaves the weapon and is then designed to penetrate and detonate, essentially blowing its target apart from the inside, not just surface detonation. It is a common misunderstanding to confuse these weapons with the more crude projectile weapons like auto guns. Bolt guns do look and operate similarly, but the size of the rounds and the devastating power of them is said to far exceed such outdated weapons. Standard magazines may contain 20 or 30 rounds, and the weapons generally operate with a semi-automatic or three round burst operation. There are also fully automatic variants. Bolt guns are heard to make a literal roar when fired, and for ordinary humans in proximity, the sound is deafening. This is caused by the propellant in the bolt shells igniting as they leave the weapon, and then followed through by detonation on reaching their target. One projectile weapon used by the Imperium, which does not use bolts, is the fully automatic assault cannons, which are usually wielded by Astartes Terminators, Dreadnoughts, tanks, and some aircraft. These Gatling weapons instead use a cased round comprising a dense metallic core covered in a non-metallic composite sheath with a standard Imperial diamantine tip. Truly, if only all Imperial ammunition were that simple. Bolt weapons are constructed by the Adeptus Mechanicus or Space Marine Forges. They're designed to be utilized not by ordinary humans, but by the genetically adapted transhuman forces of the Imperium, the Astartes. The weight of a standard bolt weapon would require supportive bracing for any ordinary human and be generally impractical, not to mention the severe recoil which would be far too heavy for most humans and likely cause severe damage, even possibly breaking or dislocation of limbs. Bolt weapons are of course still used by Imperial Guard when mounted on vehicles or static support platforms. Pistol variants are utilized by some Imperial Guard, usually officers, but these are not the same scale as used by Space Marines. Still, for all of its power, one might wonder why the bolter was not considered as a default weapon for soldiers of the Imperium. If it can be scaled and used, then why not? Well, one of the core reasons is that unlike an Imperial LAS gun, which only requires a quick daily disassembly and cleaning, plus obviously the essential mandatory prayers to the machine spirit, Imperial bolters are said to require much more careful maintenance and cleaning to ensure proper functionality. A blind Astartes veteran could maintain their bolter in less time than a similarly sighted veteran guardsman would their lasgun. For an average pleb human Imperial soldier who, let's remember, very often have barely any training or preparation before they're sent into battle, such proficient aspirations of knowing the weapon are very far out of reach. Not to mention one of the basic facts of Imperial warfare, that being that ordinary human soldiers are going to be slaughtered in far greater numbers than Astartes, and so the disposability or wastage of their equipment has to be factored into the equation of human attrition. Although saying that, it's still very much not disposable, and many a guard sergeant will have shouted, hey, can you throw your weapon back while some poor Imperial is being eaten alive or set on fire by a shower of Orc Prometheum? Hence the need for a simpler standard armament for guardsmen. Another disadvantage for the flexibility of the bolter is its weight. Compared to the small and easily recharged power packs of the Lasgun, say, bolters require large, heavy magazines. This is less of an issue for Astartes and Sororitas because they can maglock ammo to their power armor and the weight isn't going to drag them down. Whereas for a guardsman, they're going to have to heave that ammo around using just the strength of their body. Bolt weapons have featured a significant amount of customization over time, and some of these are officially authorized, others far more off the books, especially when they're crafted by marines and tech marines behind closed doors. 
Usually this means the weapon adaptations are limited though within specific chapters. There are at least 28 patterns utilised by the Astartes, 3 by the Sororitas and then various others by Mechanicus and other human factions. As with most things in the 41st millennium, adaptation and lost schematics make the numbers always unreliable and open to change. But the core basics of how a bolter is built, operates and the ammunition they use is very well established. Some bolt guns are even famous enough to be named, like Rogel Dawn's tactical bolter, the Voice of Terror. Primark Dawn's bolter was presented to him by the Adeptus Custodes, honouring his appointment as the Praetorian of Terror. Others have curious stories to tell, such as the Artificer weapon, the Executioner's Voice, ancient relics created before the Heresy but which were lost in the warp fused apparently into a space hulk only later to be discovered by a team of Mechanicus but who also failed to extract it and they themselves then became trapped. Finally the weapon was retrieved by the rightful original owners, the Dark Angels Astardes, who recovered this highly crafted relic piece of weaponry, a high prize for any chapter. Bolt guns though were not always the default weapon of choice for the Astartes. Millennia ago the Space Marine Legions, as they stepped out among the stars, we're very commonly still using what are known as Volkite weapons. This is a class of powerful thermal ray weapon possessing technology pre-imperial in origin. Volkite weapons could penetrate thick ceramite with one concentrated beam shot, and it had obviously devastating effects on organic matter as well. Volkite weapons were a far more specialised piece of weaponry though, and so required more challenging production. This was fine at the beginning of the Crusade, but as things expanded, equipping the Astartes became more and more challenging for the Mechanicum, and so the bolt weapons began to supersede the Volkite, which were still very revered weapons for the Astartes, but over time their numbers dwindled, and this is where the bolt gun became the default armament. Of course by the heresy, any surviving Volkite weapons were greatly feared and prized for their ability to kill fellow Astartes. Volkites also saw use among some human soldiers during this period in this Solar Auxiliae. One of the most notable users of Volkite weapons was the Primarch of the Traitor Legion, the Emperor's Children, who used a master crafted Volkite charger named Firebrand. With the return of Belisarius' call, we begin to see the resurgence of Volkite weapons again, but now termed Neo-Volkite. These immensely powerful weapons are terrifying on the battlefields of M41, but also still very limited in production quantities. For the Space Marines, the bolt gun is their weapon. It is part of their very identity, a powerful symbol of mankind's supremacy over all in the galaxy, and the Emperor's ultimate right to claim all they care to. Bolt weapons are not mass produced like lasguns, they are only fabricated in necessary quantities and always to precise exacting standards using the finest materials. Each space marine is extremely attentive in their duty of care to their bolt gun, paired of course with performing the correct rituals and rites as overseen by the tech marines and mechanicus representatives within their chapter. Bolt guns or bolters come in a variety of patterns like most Imperial weapons, often patterns related to the world that they are constructed upon such as a riser pattern or Mars pattern. Sometimes Imperial hardware can also be named after whoever discovered its STC or it may have some other historical association, such as the mounting its place within or the troop type that it is most used with. More recent updates to the Bolter include the Mark II Call Pattern Bolt Rifle. This version was produced during the latter period of the 41st millennium for the Primaris Space Marines, named after Magos Belisarius Call. This iteration of the Bolter is said to have been recrafted and re-engineered to near perfection, which always seems mildly heretical to me, because it's insinuating that the divine previous patterns no doubt willed by the Omnissiah himself are unworthy and imperfect. Whilst humans can use adapted variations of bolters, it's primarily designed for the Astartes and with that in mind its design is adapted for use by those wearing Astartes power armour. Consequently it lacks a stock as you might see with say an Imperial Laz gun or Laz rifle. Power armour is too bulky to really accommodate stock usage, plus it's just not necessary. The studies are more than capable of firing the weapon effectively from the hip or just free-handed. But what about aiming? Well, discounting Astartes' elite level of combat skill all around, 
bolters are not commonly fired at significantly long ranges. Plus, their eye lenses within the helmets have advanced targeting systems that link with the Space Marines' auto sensors for enhanced accuracy, all compensating for the fact that they do not have to aim down the sights of the weapon, as it were. The very nature of combat in M41, though, tends to mean aiming down sights is something more to be seen by lines of embedded guardsmen sitting in trenches. Astartes are more likely to be charging toward an enemy who have already been heavily suppressed by support firepower, and so closing the engagement distance will be their main concern, not to mention the fact that if an enemy is so small or so far away for an Astartes to accurately hit them, it's probably best engaged by some other weapon. Because when you're most often going to be exploding out from a drop pod in the heat of battle, the limitations of the weapon do not readily present themselves. Plus, power armor and Astartes black carapace systems can easily compensate for the powerful feedback of the weapon. The only time you may see Astartes carrying a stock adapted weapon will be something like a stalker pattern bolter used for longer range target engagement. And this is also when you might see some kind of sight attached to the weapon. But again, this may not necessitate direct visual aiming. It could simply mean that the weapon is equipped with a specific optical sight to enhance targeting of a specific enemy relayed directly into the lens feed of the Space Marine. There are several distinct variations of bolt weapons. Pistols, bolt guns, storm bolters, heavy bolters, psi cannon, hurricane bolters, and Vulcan mega bolters. Now, bolt pistols are much as they sound, a pistol scaled version of the bolt gun. Outside of Space Marines and other elite Imperial forces, bolt pistols are rare and signs of status and power. They're only manufactured in specialized facilities on Mars and Space Marine homeworlds due to the advanced technology inherent to them. So only a minority can afford these because of the high cost of maintenance and ammunition. Sometimes they might be passed down through the generations of noble families as heirlooms and relics detailed with elaborate scroll work and family crests. Other bolt pistols, such as the Absolver, would seem like a fully sized rifle in non-augmented human hands. But like many of the adapted bolt weapons, you really could see these things anywhere, from a hive world to a rogue trader to an inquisitor. Bolt guns, as we've already noted, a .75 caliber weapon firing a self-propelled bolt designed specifically for personal armor penetration and to explode with devastating effect upon and inside the enemy. Moreover, the sound that they make is a roar designed to instill a sense of dread in the enemy who may wonder what judgment or wrath is coming their way. There are a considerable amount of variations on the specific base bolt gun that we will look at shortly. Storm bolters are double-barreled iterations of standard bolt guns and much heavier weapons. They're not commonly utilized by Space Marines in the standard power armor, but they can use a storm bolter, and even the Sororitas are seen sometimes to be capable of wielding these. Most commonly though, they're used one-handed by Astartes wearing the heavy ancient Terminator armor. They're also regularly mounted atop Imperial tanks as a turret gunner weapon, and Terminator Marines have limited dexterity, so Storm Bolters were developed to use box magazines with anything around 150 rounds. When not used by a Terminator, its magazine is probably a smaller 60 round variation. Its ammunition though remains the same as with standard bolt guns. Combi or dual linked bolters arrived during the Crusade and eventually the Heresy. There was a lot of experimentation and development by the Astartes themselves in this time, and they were often able to assess their own needs and use their operations and missions as a basis for feedback on the gear that they were using. This led to variants like the dual linked bolters, which were a precursor to the storm bolters. There was a need to scale the power of weaponry carried by the developing Terminator armor. As time went along, they started to add and combine other weapons. Essentially, it's usually a very specific weapon like a plasma gun or a flame weapon that has a kind of underslung bolter modified into it, although originally these were far more crude and just welded together basically. But by M41, they're seamlessly integrated and no longer need a Terminator to use them. Firstborn, such as the Stern Guard or Death Watch, regularly carry combi weapons for their increased flexibility and firepower. Heavy bolters are pretty self-explanatory. It's a heavier variation of a bolt gun. 
It's essentially a support weapon using a much higher caliber. It features a high rate of fire and minimal maintenance requirements. It can operate as a static heavy support weapon for Imperial Guard as well as being mounted on armored vehicles or carried by Space Marine Devastator units. Occasionally, especially powerful Imperial Guard may also carry it as a primary weapon. Heavy bolters use an electronic pulse system to maintain high rates of automatic fire. Space Marines and even Sororitas have been seen to brace wield a heavy bolter when firing it from the hip, using an ammo feed backpack. The weapon is aimed via heads-up display for the user with an integrated laser pointer. Now, a Psy Cannon may not sound like a bolt weapon, but their platform is based on the bolt gun. Psy cannons are anti-demonic weapons only used by the Ordo Malleus and the Grey Knights. The weapon fires bolts that have been heavily infused with psychic energy, and the bolt is devastating to the psyche and physical bodies of psychers, demons, and possessed beings. Each Psy cannon bolt is also silver-tipped and hand-inscribed with anti-demonic symbols, making them truly demon killers. There are other variations to the Psy Cannon, so-called Psych-Out weapons taking grenade and even missile form. And then we come to the amazingly insane Hurricane Bolters. These are a set of six coaxial bolt guns. Commonly, these are mounted on side sponsons of Astartes Land Raiders, typically on the Crusader variant. Storm Raven gunships and the ironclad dreadnoughts have also been seen to use Hurricane Bolters. More recently, Astartes Centurion warsuits also feature this wall of firepower mounted into their chests. And then lastly, we have the horrifying Vulcan Mega Bolter. This is an immensely large weapon, usually mounted upon Imperial Warhound Titans and other super heavy platforms. It consists of a twin-linked heavy caliber multi-barrel rotating bolt gun, capable of firing shells at 300 rounds per second. Although lacking the high armor penetration usually seen on a weapon of its status, the sheer unrelenting kinetic force of impacts from a Vulcan is enough to pin down and break apart through the sheer suppression upon an enemy. Although, perhaps comically, Titans have been seen to fire these weapons at friendly targets who are being assaulted by boarding infantry, with the Vulcan Mega Bolter inflicting relatively light damage comparatively against other Titans, it outweighs the more severe threat of the crew being killed or the internal machinery damaged. Now, there are a significant amount of patterns when it comes to Bolters. So many that I think if I were to cover them all today, we'd be here for another half an hour. So I've chosen a core selection to run down for today. But truth be told, many Bolter variants really have very minor differences. So we're not really missing out on much. Some are very purely cosmetic. The only real differences between them are naming conventions. Most of the time it's things like having engravings or they've used different materials for weight and so forth in the construction. A great many more have just got vague descriptions about efficiency, difference in slight size, basically nondescript notations about efficiency based often on the planet or region of their production. So for the sake of completion, it would be good to perhaps later just run down an exhaustive list of all patterns and ammunition in a more technical breakdown. But forgive me for not listing like 30 patterns today when they're basically just different in name, bolter underscore final 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 and so on. So first up as always, we have one of the most commonly used bolt guns by Astartes, the Godwin pattern. Its design is based upon ancient STC technology from before the birth of the Imperium but appears specifically to have been designed for use by the Astartes. The Godwin has a built-in ammo counter and a sickle-shaped magazine carrying 30 rounds, firing the standard calibre bolt and depleted deuterium core. This bolter typically fires in bursts of four rounds, and it's also said to have a genetic palm reader. Now, this is something that people have noted about and commented on before. How does it make sense to have a genetic palm reader when Astartes wear power gauntlets or gloves? Well, very obviously the answer is the black carapace. Their body interacts with their power armor, and there must undoubtedly be some interaction between the interior palm of the glove and the grip of the weapon. Now, of course, some Space Marine chapters will have their own variants of the Godwin, such as the Angelus Bolter used by the Blood Angels, the Fenris by the Space Wolves, but the Godwin plane remains the core weapon for Firstborn Marines. It remains the true sacred Bolter, as cited in the Codex Astartes. The Sororitas also use a variation of this known as the Godwin Deas pattern. 
The Phobos pattern was originally known as the Phobos R017 pattern and it's associated with Mark II Crusade armor. It's one of the most venerable designs of Bolter used by the Astartes and carries a .70 caliber round, not the more standard .75 used in the modern Bolters. The Phobos pattern bolt guns were fabricated on Mars in and around the beginning of the Imperium. Those bolt guns determined as being relics are just extremely rare bolt guns believed to have been used by the Emperor's warriors during the earliest days of the Imperium and bear an eagle's claw and thunderbolt systems. So basically these were used by the thunder warriors. They're considered holy relics and are imbued with the literal wrath of the Emperor and so are extremely highly prized and kept extremely safe within vaults of any Space Marine chapters. Stalker bolters are standard bolt guns but which have a longer barrel and optic. They're pretty self-explanatory and essentially more reminiscent of a battle rifle or marksman weapon. There are then further iterations specifically for these weapons customised for the user or the specific unit. The Tigris pattern, it's a bolter that was discovered on a forge world Tigris before the Horus Heresy, it carries a .60 calibre bolt and the STC design for this weapon is now lost. The Tigris was dominant among the traitor legions during the outbreak of the Heresy but the Tigris pattern is now lost and the bolters that bear this name are no longer produced, they rarely continue to see service through into the 41st millennium. The Umbra pattern bolt gun was first used in the later years of the Great Crusade and was produced in large quantities by the time of the Siege of Terror. There was an adjacent variation known as the Umbra Ferox which featured enhanced optical sensors and a box mag for increased ammunition capacity. Although like many of these older patterns it fell out of favour but by M41 the pattern has been reissued for use by the Sisters of Silence. So then we have the Avenger Mega Bolter. Think of an A10's 30mm cannon and you're on the right track, but scale it up. The Avenger Mega Bolter is a devastating rapid fire weapon mounted on strike aircraft and Space Marine Fire Raptors, the smaller single version of the Vulcan Mega Bolter. These five barreled electronically fired rotary weapons can devastate ground and air targets with ease. And then of course you've got the Vulcan Mega Bolter itself. This dual iteration of the Avenger Mega Bolter is twice as nasty for its enemies. Its immense rate of fire makes a horrific anti-infantry or anti-vehicle weapon. If anything is left after the firing stops, chances are that all that will remain are carbonized fragments. Within the other factions outside of the Astartes like the Inquisition or Sororitas, they often have small custom adaptations, for example the Condemner pattern bolt weapon which carries a crossbow atop of it. So much like a combi weapon except that it delivers a silver arrow like bolt to the enemy. This is primarily used against demons, heretics, possessed, condemned psychers. The arrow itself inscribed with anti-demonic and psycher disrupting litanies not dissimilar to the bolts used in the psy cannon. Of course it should be noted that despite the holy status of the bolt gun in the upper echelons of the Imperial forces, at the opposite end of the spectrum there are those who use poor imitations, even ripped off bastardized versions of the bolter like the sarcastically named footfall pattern, known by anybody in the region of the Coronas Expanse to be a scam. Local arms dealers may try to fleece unsuspecting customers with a false air of legitimacy, but these bolters are poorly made, crude and inefficient. They're basically counterfeit weapons and will fail regularly, if not just blow up in your hands. So with most of these dodgy alternative bolt weapons, if they don't just jam, blow up in your hands or lead to arrest by enforcers, they could still in fact be immensely powerful for an ordinary human even if they are a knockoff, because when you're fighting in a collapsing underhive corridor with a vicious gigantic cyber dog charging at you, having a weapon that can basically explode your enemy in one shot is something many gang members or enforcers would really wish for. Still, it's an expensive tool to acquire, and even if one managed to lay your hands on a bolt weapon, your biggest next problem is avoiding the eyes of the authorities, and then worse after that, securing ammunition. Because bolt rounds are only produced in highly secure manufactorum upon often forge worlds. So those attempting to smuggle out even very small quantities are taking an immense risk. And for those who are able to track down a seller for such items on a hive world, the price for even a single round isn't going to come cheap. Now, I haven't forgotten about the Primaris, of course, who could ever forget, thanks to the experimental borderline heretic experimentations of Belisarius Call, the Mechanicus genius who forged the Primaris Marines. 
because he also brought new equipment for their use. The Mark II call pattern bolt rifle is a larger and longer barreled upgrade of the standard bolter, allowing for more accuracy at range and further armour piercing capabilities. The bolt rifle has maintained its multi-roll flexibility like the bolt gun predecessor, thus enabling for a number of easily created variants such as the auto bolt rifle, an automatic variant featuring a high capacity magazine, the stalker bolt rifle which takes the identical role as the Stalker Bolter, and then there are the Primaris Bolt Carbine and Marksman variants, which are shortened versions for use by Reavers and Infiltrator squads. Tech Marines also use what are called Forge Bolters, it's just a shoulder mounted small bolter variant synced with their optical lenses and fired remotely. And then we come up to the Heavy Bolt Rifles. These are something the equivalent of a Marksman DMR for Astartes. In three formats, the Executor, Default Heavy and the Hellstorm. The weapon features longer range and again armour penetration, with the Executor variant dealing even higher penetration but a reduced rate of fire, the Hellstorm being the opposite and the standard Heavy the default. Lastly, there are the more precision mastercrafted variants of the Instigator Bolt Carbine, a suppressed stealth weapon used by Vanguard Space Marine Captains and the Oculus Bolt Carbine used by their lieutenants. These specialised weapons are designed to maximise damage and enable the survival of these units who operate in covert missions behind enemy lines. For the Imperium and the Astartes since their inception and during the Great Crusade, many situations have arisen over the millennia that have required specialised ammunition for Imperial bolt weapons. A standard bolt, as previously described, has to be that .75 calibre and has a diamantine tip with a depleted deuterium core. Now hold on for just a moment, we'll get to the deuterium. A diamantine is described as being a composite ceramic material used by the Imperium to fabricate weapons, ammunition and even armour. Thus, diamantine is taken to meaning resembling diamond-like molecular structure and is probably an industrialised product used by the Imperium in the composite. Bolt shells are said to have a significant amount of mass as well. This combined with an extremely hardened shell is what gives them their unreal penetration and stopping power. A common real world reference people make is them being similar to a 40mm grenade round that you might fire under slung or from a launcher. Or another example is that they're just a scaled up shotgun slug. And the answer is that probably there's some kind of compromise between the two, as well as of course having those armour piercing properties. It's basically a very big, very deadly round. So then we come to the part of the video that nobody asked for, and that also I really didn't anticipate on speaking for quite so long about. This is the commonly complained issue of the deuterium core within bolter shells. I'm not going to lie, I got a little bit carried away here. So it remains something that people do seem to get quite ruffled by. And also often I have seen people falling over themselves to point out that deuterium is problematic. But of course, it also very much pleases me to see just how many people are as confused by this as myself and a great many lore followers. But don't blame me, blame whoever long ago decided to write a description of bolt rounds using deuterium. It remains a mystery, they have a lot to answer for, and I think we all know that ultimately in real likelihood it's one of those things that falls into the camp of it sounded cool at the time. Although I know we always wish there was more to it than that when it comes to these weird specific things, it's much like the concept of chainsaws being practical and las guns working in reality. And basically what are we talking about here? Essentially it's the select your 40k suspension of disbelief item of choice at this point. I personally choose the Necron star killing machine. How's that one working? You tell me. But here's where I need to make the unexpected tangent within the tangent, and this one really caught me off guard. Stunned even. In researching details for this today, I was doing the usual reading, noting, searching around for additional nuggets that I'd missed from a 5th edition random codex footnote about deuterium or something like this, searching around for some science articles online titled, What the Hell is Deuterium? But it's when I suddenly discovered that for some unexplained reason, the 40k wiki had gone rogue and decided to replace all descriptions on the Bolter page about depleted deuterium with depleted uranium. Who authorised that one? 
I didn't realise that the wikis were now writing the law as well as collating it. And you might think to yourself, well, that's an easy mistake to make. They probably just assumed it. Not really, because most wikis just literally verbatim copy-paste text from the original material. Even more confusing, not only is it incorrect according to the law, it does now also contradict other pages which continue to list deuterium as a core component of bolt rounds. So I figure somebody over there eventually just cracked at the concept of deuterium and decided to start rewriting the law. But that seems to somewhat go against the concept of having a wiki. At least the lexicanum got it right. Good old reliable lexicanum with its actually linked endnotes. Emperor bless them. Still, it's certainly not the first time I've encountered this kind of weird unofficial wiki rewrite, but this one caught me off guard with how specific it was. But it does highlight one thing that I've been saying for a long time, and that's to always check your sources, not just check a wiki. It's time consuming and one reason why it takes me weeks often to make a video, but unfortunately, as is highlighted here, it's often really necessary. So if you're curious to go look for yourself where deuterium is mentioned, you can check it out in the third edition rulebook, the fourth edition Space Marine Codex, the fourth edition Munitorum, and of course the benchmark publication for excessively detailed 40k knowledge, Imperial Armour Volume 2, which has a dedicated appendix on Imperial Ammunition. Now, deuterium as a material in the 40k verse is also mentioned in relation to macro cannons in Rogue Trader, Battlefleet Coronas, and in the 8th Imperial Knights in relation to Laz Impulsors. This one is actually kind of interesting because it speaks about lost human technology being made possible by a trio of forge worlds known as the Deuterium Stars. And you think, well, that's just the name of the system. Yes, but they had maintained the knowledge of so-called fusion fire. And if you know what deuterium is, that makes some sense. So very likely the naming of the planets and their knowledge are very closely connected. And I like things like that in 40K. Suffice to say, deuterium has been continually mentioned for the better part of 20 years in 40K lore. And even if you only count the third and fourth editions, that's still 10 years. So as far as I can tell, it's not been updated or purged from Imperial Records. I can tell you what there is no mention of, depleted uranium. Now, with all that said, should it probably speculatively be depleted uranium inside bolt rounds? Maybe, but this is beside the point, because if the gods of the verse wanted to have this super specific pointless detail changed by now, they would have done so. They've had 20 years to do it if they wanted to. Incidentally, for anybody who doesn't know why depleted uranium is valuable in use for projectile composition, it's mainly because of its density, which makes sense. And it makes plenty of sense why you'd want it in a bolt around, because it's about one and a half times as dense as lead. And the increased density enables it to have significantly high pressure at the point of impact, making for better armor penetration. So something like depleted uranium would also sit quite readily within the 40k verse. I've talked about this before because they do use various nuclear materials and weapons. So 40K is a place where irradiated battlefields such as seen on Krieg and other such horrors are the norm, which when you think about it is quite disturbing as yet again 40K overlaps concerningly easily with our own reality. Circling back around though, deuterium is one of two stable isotopes of hydrogen. So the concept of depleted deuterium it doesn't really make any sense. This is of course the problem with a lot of science fiction, because if you dig down on some of the concepts, it tends to break a lot of hardware necessary to facilitate a functional fictional verse. FTL drives, or faster than light drives, being one of the most common, because even when they've tried to give reasonable rationalizations, it gets very tricky in space verses. Not to mention of course my recent discussions about laser or blaster guns in sci-fi. I think if I ever wrote some original fiction, laser weapons would be one of the things that would be outright banned. So deuterium, it's a term that back in the 80s probably nobody really thought about drilling down on. Nowadays, when people like to look into stuff, it's a little bit clunky. But there you go. It's still in the law. With all of that said though, deuterium is something used in those fusion reactions I mentioned before. And as interesting as that side of it may be without us going off on a wild science tangent that I'm not at all qualified to discuss, the bottom line is that however it may be used in reaction situations, coming back to the concept of it being depleted and then somehow put inside ammunition to make it more powerful, it still makes little to no sense. If they were trying to get at some concept of kind of hydrogen fusion creating a reaction when the bolt round hits and something something, but depleted deuterium, it doesn't make any sense. But it is the law. Unless of course similarly to my discussion about las guns, you want to lean in on the whole it's the future, they've discovered stuff we don't know about, and that's fine I guess, it's at least one perspective that would let me draw a line under it and sleep better at night. That feels like surely enough said about deuterium, and I plan to now never speak about it again. Moving on though to another 
Bolt related controversy. What I see very often is the question, if Bolt weapons use self-propelled ammunition, why does the weapon still eject a shell casing? In a standard projectile weapon, the firing pin hits the round primer, igniting the charge which powers a bullet forward and now the empty casing is ejected. So Bolt weapons don't need that charge, so why would they expend an empty shell casing? And the answer is simple enough, they do still use a standard charge. And you might be saying, well hold on, I thought they were self-propelled. True, they are self-propelled, and they also use a standard charge. According to Imperial Mechanica scripture, bolt ammunition works with a two-stage system. The idea is, to avoid overpressuring the bolt, it's fired using a small conventional charge to get it out of the weapon itself. As this happens, it's also just igniting the fuel propellant, and the empty casing is ejected out of the weapon, the bolt itself now powering towards its target. Apparently this system is designed to reduce recoil as well, and this efficient system allows for the burst or rapid fire of rounds, and it's why we see spent casings ejected from bolter weapons. But we're not out of the woods yet on the technical side of things, for always there comes the topic of ammunition. Why is it that Astartes don't carry any? Imperial Guard at least often carry backpacks, which is somewhat funny when you consider their power packs are meant to be rechargeable, so they probably need less actual power packs than others. Still, the absence of visible ammunition in 40k is pretty prevalent. Astartes are often depicted as carrying basically a single magazine, and that's usually in the weapon. Power armour is meant to have this maglocking feature. It's mentioned constantly in the novels, maglock this, maglock that. Astartes can basically magnetise at will different panels on their armour to lock utilities and ammunition, magazines for example, onto it. Except they never do, which is weird. I guess it's to continue the clean look and stop them looking ridiculously encumbered, but it also somewhat dents the immersion. Admittedly, this has sort of attempted to be remedied here and there on some recent miniatures which have shown marines with more pouches and packs about themselves. In fact, there are often some additional pouches and packs in kits for a good while now that you can put on. It's just often that people don't bother to actually put them on a model because it makes them look, again, cluttered and encumbered. And no, Space Marines can't use their backpacks because Astardi's packs are not for storage, they're literally power plants which enable their massive powered armour suits to work. That's it, that's what they're there for. Now some will argue that Marines do not need tons of additional ammo because their focus is on rapid, overwhelming assault tactics, insert maximum devastating firepower, problem solved, thereby the risk of finding oneself out of ammunition is very limited. But that seems quite the gamble to me personally. Seems prudent to surely have a couple of extra mags, you know, just in case things are not quite as expected. Ammunition issues only seem to really ever apply to Imperial Guardsmen, for whom the availability of logistics seems always very, very real, and why they favour LAS weapons, which better suit them during prolonged operations or for missions where resupply is improbable or difficult. Still, we do also sometimes see the Imperial Cherubs who carry additional ammo for heavy weapons units, and the Sororitas use these as well. Would it be too much then to perhaps just show the occasional ammo bearer floating alongside Astartes, or if you'd allow me to momentarily step into the speculative suggestions, would this not be an ideal role for Astartes scouts, aka neophytes? Seems the perfect role for them, give them the scout shotgun, a backpack full of ammo, Undoubtedly, it dents the pristine squad flow of Astartes combat to have somebody bringing up the rear carrying a chunky bag of ammunition. And I get that, but why could we not, for example, have drop pods specifically which are designed as resupply points that again use that genetic palm print of the Astartes to unlock? Anyway, further thoughts on Astartes ammo? Put it down below. In addition to its varying ammunition, bolters have a variety of different magazine types. The standard sickle magazine is what's seen on most bolt guns, and it's just stock, typically carrying between 20 and 30 rounds. Straight magazines do exist, but they're not so commonly used now, and generally hold less ammo, something like 10 to 20 bolts. You may see these on the likes of stalker bolters or heavy bolt pistols. Drum mags are less common again, and are known to be fairly unreliable. They compensate with a capacity of around 40, 60 or 100 bolt rounds, but the drum mags are known to jam consistently, which is obviously problematic given the danger of many enemies facing the Imperium, but the trade-off is considered acceptable. These were frequently seen on the older variant of Storm Bolters used by Terminators, but then this was superseded later by the box magazines, which are less problematic. 
Belt feeds suggest use on static weapons like a machine gun, but actually they're used on older bolt guns that you now see mainly used by the traitor Chaos Space Marines. Then we have the unusual Duplus X, which is a magazine popular with planetary law enforcement and hive gangs. It takes two mags which are attached to tape or cloth and essentially an improvised means of fast reloading. This is not really produced by the Imperium for standard issue and it's another one of those unusual ones. And then we come to the shells, the rounds, the actual ammunition used by the bolters. And again, like the patterns, the variants, there are many different kinds of ammunition for bolt weapons. Antiphasic shells are used by Death Watch kill teams. These were developed using some unknown technology to try and prevent Necrons from phasing out and returning to their tombs. The goal being to ensure that when they kill a Necron, they stay dead. Bane Strike rounds are shells developed secretly by the Alpha Legion during the Great Crusade, and these rounds were used by the traitors against the Imperium, designed to breach Space Marine power armor, and were first used at the Drop Site Massacre, where devastating losses were being inflicted upon the Iron Hands, Raven Guard, and Salamanders. Blood Shard shells are utilized by the Blood Angels in their Angelus bolt guns, and these contain a payload of razor filament, effective against most armor, and of course also organics. Dragonfire bolts are used by the Sternguard veteran marines and release a superheated gas that makes enemies use of cover essentially worthless. They're designed to inflict maximum damage making each round count even against targets in very heavy cover. Hellfire rounds were designed specifically to combat Tyranids. The core and tip of each round are filled with a mutagenic acid as well as thousands of needles firing into a target's flesh and pumping acid through into the target. While these were developed specifically for use against the Tyranid threats, they do have obviously an equally unpleasant result against any organic targets. Inertial fusion bolts, otherwise called implosion rounds, are a result of early experiments with alternative crack technology. When fired, their antimatter core creates a micro vacuum which collapses and violently implodes against enemy. These rounds are used almost exclusively by Death Watch Astartes because they're both rare and insanely dangerous, causing truly horrendous gaping mores in whatever the bolts connect with. Inferno bolts are designed to inflict immolation on their targets and carbonize them with superheated chemical fire. The standard deuterium core is replaced with an oxyphosphorus gel known as promethium, which is used in flamers and pretty much any flame weapon by the Imperium. The gel ignites on contact with oxygen, similar to napalm, it sticks also against an individual continuing to burn on its own. Kraken penetrator rounds are heavy duty armor piercing rounds with the deuterium this time being replaced with a solid adamantine core and a heavy primary charge. Upon impact the casing peels and the adamantine needle accelerates into its target where the larger detonator propels the metal to be especially effective against heavily armored infantry. Metal Storm Frag Shells are a cluster ammunition. They detonate prior to impact on an enemy and spray a shrapnel storm over the target, usually with horrific shredding consequences. These are obviously particularly good against weakly armored targets in great numbers. Psych Cannon Bolt Rounds, as noted previously, have significant damage properties versus psychic and demonic targets where normal rounds would do very little damage. Scorpius bolts were handcrafted by tech marines during the Great Crusade and the subsequent heresy. They contain a two-stage warhead and a micro-guidance and needle-like sabo dart which vaporizes when striking the position of an armored target, thus giving improved armor penetration. These rounds have to be hand-loaded though before firing. Stalker silenced shells are somewhat similar to subsonic rounds and meant for covert fighting. This is usually combined with a gas cartridge replacing the propellant base again for silent firing behind enemy lines. Tempest bolts utilized plasma shock generators that emit electromagnetic and thermal radiation as a shell detonates. These Tempest shells best used against mechanical targets. Then you've got Vengeance rounds. These are created using an unstable flux core tech making them highly hazardous to use, but also extremely effective in penetrating armored targets. Again, they were designed specifically to wreak vengeance against traitors to the Imperium, notably the Chaos Marines in the Heresy, comparable to the Bane Strike rounds of the Alpha Legion. Then we have Stable Flux Core Bolts. 
These are one example of the amazing technology that exists out in the galaxy just waiting to be discovered. In 992 of M41, this STC design for bolt rounds was recovered by the Mechanicus, but only after waging eight years of war upon the Necron Xenos. After finally securing the STC data, they found three usable templates. And there's perhaps always some assumption that STC just equates to military or very advanced technology. STC can literally be patterns for anything, and so the Mechanicus found themselves perhaps comically with new designs for a self-heating cooking pot, parchment auto quills, and then yes, stable flux core bolt rounds. These advanced munitions capable of melting through ceramite as if it were wax, similar to vengeance rounds, but thankfully a lot more stable. And then lastly, of course, one of my favorites is anything Vortex. Missiles, insane grenades, bonkers. But hats off to whoever sat around a table and said, you know what, we should consider putting material inside of bolt rounds that can tear a hole in reality. That's the kind of no holds barred chaotic thinking that I like. Thankfully in M41, such rounds are said to be extremely rare for the betterment undoubtedly of everyone. They work pretty much as you might imagine by creating miniature vortexes, that is tears in reality itself, opening the horrifying power of the warp directly on or within the target upon detonation. It's hard to understand just how catastrophic the damage such a weapon will unleash upon even the largest and most powerful of enemies. Even worse of course though for psychers who even if they miraculously survive or were nearby are very often driven to insanity by the tsunami of ethereal creatures pouring into their minds from the Terran reality. But out of all the ammo we've gone through here, it's really hard to imagine a more boss move than walking across a battlefield with your gun that is literally shooting rounds which tear through reality itself. Whoever is the target of those rounds is going to have a really bad day. But still, at least there's no chance of throwing it in grenade form and having it bounce back at you, or the vortex storm then just moving towards you eating all your terminators. I really do miss second edition 40k. The bolt gun, despite its wide usage throughout the entire galaxy, remains a treasured weapon, a symbol, a divine tool of the Emperor of Man, bringer of death to the enemies of the Imperium. As the primary weapon of the Astartes, its construction demands highly exacting standards. The weapons are only produced with the finest materials by skilled weaponsmith artisans. These manufactorum and those for their ammunition are heavily guarded and monitored. Security is high, as even the ammunition for bolters cannot be easily manufactured outside of specifically specialized fabricators. Regularly, they will perform rituals as part of its maintenance to keep its machine spirit in symbiosis with its user. In many respects, the Astartes are one and the same with their bolt weapons. To see them without this defining weapon feels a travesty in itself. This weapon goes beyond being a simple projectile weapon, for these are the tools of the Emperor's wrath. They roar across the battlefields of the dark future and deliver destructive justice to the enemies of mankind in service to the Imperium. For the many warriors of the Imperium, Astartes, Sororitas Inquisition, Imperial Guard, the spirit, sanctity and implied ideological meaning behind the weapons surpass any concerns about combat effectiveness. For all of the micro-analyzing about this iteration, this pattern or this component, the truly important context to take away from the weapon itself is its greater place within the lore of the Space Marines themselves. A standard LAS gun can be stripped, cleaned, and a quick prayer mumbled by any guardsman. But a bolt weapon is a holy tool authorized by he himself. It is the very literal extension of the Emperor's will. None who truly serve would ever see the bolt gun, bolt pistol, or rifle as simply a gun. Such meagre descriptions are offensive. The bolt gun is the strength of the Imperium. It is the physical messenger of death and carries the spirit of the Imperial cult, venerated by loyal servants, feared by the enemies of mankind. The bolt gun is a symbol of strength, power, and the Imperium of mankind itself. It is the Emperor of Mankind's wrath made manifest.